These are deuterium lamps used in spectroscopy. Um, these are quite unusual because deuterium is an um, isotope of hydrogen uh, and there's some, it's unusual in its own right. But the interesting thing is that the, the spectral line due to broadband molecular emissions for deuterium give a very long continuous spectrum for the ultraviolet region and it's the continuous quality of the spectrum that makes these so interesting as a light source. The construction is there's a heated cathode uh, at this side and this particular one and there's a an anode in the back here with a window where the discharge can occur between the cathode and anode and you get an intense light source looking through the discharge in the anode. So have a look at how these are driven. Okay, here we have uh, this basic circuit layout for running a deuterium lamp, uh, just the basics for it. Uh, we have a heated cathode here which is running on a low voltage supply and a slightly higher voltage supply uh, here for the plate voltage which is variable between 0 and 200. It generally runs around about 100 volts. Um, and we need a, a starting voltage as well to to initiate the arc, uh, which is about normally about 800 volts, but we've got a capacitor start here. So first of all, with the cathode uh, heated and up to temperature, we can then initiate the strike voltage to start the arc. With the arc struck here, the um, you can also reduce the current to the heater because the um, ion bombardment from the deuterium will actually sustain this uh, thermally emitting electrons. Okay, I've got a, a very basic setup to drive one of these deuterium lights. The, they've got the lamp itself sitting here and we have a power supply onto the anode plate which is a, a DC uh, variable supply uh, between 0 and two, about 200 volts I can do here. Uh, I've also got a heater connection which is quite low voltage uh, which I can which is across the cathode heater and I can bring up the uh, voltage on that until the cathode starts to, to glow. You may be just be able to see that about there. Once the cathode's glowing we can then um, apply our anode voltage uh, which I'll put about 120 volts onto it. Still nothing happens because we need to trigger it. We have a, a meter in series giving us the, the current that's set to a full scale of 100 milliamps just now. Normal running uh, current for this type of lamp is around about 300 milliamps. And uh, I have a, a ballast resistor here just to, uh, to limit the current. So I'm going to also apply a high voltage pulse onto our anode which is about 1 kV. Uh, and uh, hopefully this will light. There we go, the minute it triggers you can then bring up the current here and you can see the discharge is actually glowing inside the, the lamp. If I turn the brightness of this a little bit down. Once the discharge is established you can actually reduce the, the heater voltage uh, to some extent. The uh, the current will keep that running hot. So the actual light is emitted from a small window um, right on the, the front here. This is where the light is a little bit more intense uh, and be used for in any equipment running this light type of light. This is a commercial ballast for a deuterium lamp. It uh, runs off 24 volts DC uh, and it has on board the inverter part here which generates the anode voltage, the 100 odd volts, and it's uh, rectified and smoothed. It also has your voltage generation for the pulse to start it, so the start transformer is here. Uh, what's interesting is this little set of LEDs along here. This is a kind of status bar telling you what the state of the lamps run up is. So we can plug this in and have a little look at the process this goes through. 
Okay, I'm going to connect this up to its supply. And primarily, you'll see these two LEDs have lit up, indicating the um, the 24 volts is present, and also the anode voltage from the inverter is present. And if I then switch the inhibit here to proceed from here, that means the heater is now lit up. You can actually see the heater cathode starting to glow. There is a, a run up time for that. It will give a, the timer to allow a certain amount of time to pass before it will then apply the ignition voltage. The LED at the end will indicate lamp start and then a second timer to be applied before the heater's current's reduced. That's the application of the start and you can see the now the discharge is, is operational. Once there's the, with the run up there that last LED indicates that they have the current on the heater has been reduced and the lamp is now running at full output.